Welcome everybody, my name is Christian and I'm going to go over some basic um, tactics and strategy videos for Star Wars Armada and the first one is I'm going to do on Rebellion Fleet Building. You don't have to do it this way but I prefer choosing my Admirals first and then building a fleet around that. So there's three Admirals currently. There's probably going to end up being five as soon as Wave 2 is out, but I'll do a separate video on that. So there's Mon Matha, and um, obviously um, it's hard to read and put into focus, so I'll just put the image on the side. So there's Mon Matha with 30 points. There's Garmbel Ibis, I hope I pronounced that correctly, at 25, and General Dama, who came with the core kit for 20. So each one of them have a very different text ability and by building your fleet to maximize what that ability is, I feel like it really makes your um, points much more effective. For example, Mon Moth is when a friendly ship resolves an evade token, it can um, cancel one die at medium range or re-roll one die at distance one or close range. So that is this token to evade. And normally, you get to do a reroll only when it's at long range. And instead of that, it increases that so it's medium and long range. Instead of rerolls at medium, it gives you rerolls at close. Which actually is probably, that is, that, is, that is a good amount of space. And a lot of fighting happens at rerolls. And even if a squadron attacks you at distance one, you can do a reroll. So if you get like a hit critical, you can go ahead and like try to reduce that to a blank or just a hit. So by this is a very powerful card, particularly since every single one of the rebel ships in wave one and the core have at least one of the token. So the next admiral is Garmbel Ibis. Um, at the start in, of the first and fifth round, each friendly ship may gain a number of command tokens equal to its command value. So that's, you know, putting on these. And so it's essentially like a cheaper version of the Empire's Tarkin power, um, Admiral, which, like, Tarkin's is probably a little bit better because it's every round and you get to choose each one, but at the same time, you get to give yourself a bank of them, but you don't want to use ships that only have one command value, like the Corvette, or, um, but for fleets with him, you definitely want to focus on the Nebulon Bs and the Assault Frigates. And the last card, which is the cheapest, which is only 20 points, is before an enemy ship is dealt face-up damage card, you have to look at the top four cards of the damage deck and choose the one that you want to go into effect and put the others in the discard pile. That is actually a, partic a very powerful card for several particular reasons. Now, while Mon Mata like, gives your ships the most durability, General um, Dama's card actually helps both not ships, squadrons, and objective, um, uh, certain objectives. Or even if you hit an asteroid, you do one face of damage. You actually get to really cause as much pain as possible depending on your situation with this deck. So if you're going to do um, a fighter heavy build, um, General Dama is actually a really good choice. So like for example, if someone like got a critical hit, it would be point defense failure, capacitor failure, misaligned, a uh, projector misaligned, or thruster fissure. Early in the game, projector misalignment will be great because the whole zone with the most shields loses all of its shields. So suddenly a victory star destroyer with three shields in the front has nothing. So, and, but, if it's like a gladiator, maybe point defense failure is, is good. Or if you have a bunch of fighters and you want to make sure it can't even fire a single shot, maybe point defense. But 
right now uh, out of these. But again, for whatever your situation is, you get to choose what it is, and that's particularly damaging. So with each one of these admirals, you want to give yourself a way to maximize what their power is. So even though every ship, every rebel ship has at least one evade, so these are the three, three classes of ships that go into the rebel fleet right now. The fact that corvettes have two and therefore much more likely to be able to use your evade token I, Mon Matha should be paired with a fleet that is at least the bulk of it being Corvettes. Now, of course, you can have like a Nebulon B or an Assault Frigate as like your flagship, but you know, for every one of those ships, you should have at least one or two of a Corvette to pair with it because it makes them almost immune to small, like, the long like attacks at further ranges where if they're only shooting like one or two shots from uh, Imperial Star Destroyer's rear arc it's only two die so if you get to take one of those away each time the other one's probably going to be a miss or a useless accuracy so Mon Matha great card for all ships but an amazing card when you pair them with Corvettes now, Garm Bel Ibis, the fact that he gives as many command tokens as your command value is, you want to choose ships that have as much command value as possible, so you get more tokens per that 25 points. So, even in a 300 point game, you can do three assault frigates and therefore get nine tokens rather than if you had, you know, five Corvettes and only get five tokens and um, so you just got to think of it that way is like how many tokens you're giving yourself and tokens are particularly useful especially in a pinch it gives you a lot more flexibility you can go from you you can ink navi navigate is particularly useful especially for assault frigates because you know, maybe you want to get at that front arc, so you go from speed two to three. Or if you want to slow down when you're already in their rear arc and you want to be there as long as possible. Um, a squadron token essentially gives you the effective change as having um, the expanded hangar bay without having to pay those extra points because you can go ahead and activate four if you want, or Sometimes if there's only one in range of your ship and you don't want to waste a whole activate squadron command, you can just use the token if it's just one. Engineering, as soon as you have any damage, go ahead and just take that first shield damage away, just like that. In concentrate fire token, you know, a reroll is always good. Uh, but in terms of defenses, um, giving yourself a navigate and an engineering is a, a, a very strong suggestion. Now with General, uh, with General Dama, what ships you choose for him really aren't as important except for I would highly recommend to pair him with Dama's Pride and particularly um, bomb bombers that can, fighters that actually have, that can use the criticals particularly Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker bypasses shields. So early in the game, you can go in and roll one black die. Hopefully you get a critical and then you get to choose a really damaging critical effect right off of the bat that can really sabotage um, what their, you know, you can take away their command dial unless they um, you know, don't use it, or if they go past a certain speed, they take damage. If you can do that early on in the game, you can really inflict a lot of damage. With Adama's Pride, 
you cancel all your attack die to deal one face up damage to the defender. So again, this bypasses shield, bypasses defense tokens. If you get one blue critical in your dice roll, then bam, you get to choose a really damaging, um, damaging critical effect. Uh, Dama's pride should like almost always be paired, be put on a Corvette B because you have more blue dice than um, uh, red, and so that gives you an extra chance of getting that blue critical. And especially if you're rolling three, three blue dice, you have a pretty good chance of get, moving ahead and getting a critical. Um, so when you're doing a Dama though, I want to emphasize so much on the A-wings because A-wings, even though they use black die against ships, they're not bombers, so they can't do critical effects. But whenever you are a Dama, you should definitely always play minefields um, as one of your objectives. And hopefully your opponent is you know, foolish enough to choose that one, because if they ever do take a critical effect from those mines, you get to choose how, which one it is. So those are the three admirals. And that's just a rough outline of what ships they should be paired with. Now I'm going to go over some of the strengths of the different ships and what I like about them and how to use them within a full fleet. Now, really no matter who the general is, I kind of like having one assault frigate flagship. Even with Mon Matha, I like pairing Mon Matha with like one assault frigate and then maybe um, two or three Corvettes, usually three if you uh, are a little lean on the upgrades and the fighters, but the ship looks weird, but man, it is, is very powerful, and it's side arc with three red dice and one blue die, and just the, the size of the side arc is just so, like, it's almost everything is going to be in in one of these two arcs and by its maneuverability is actually pretty impressive it is that word is all right cut <laughs> uh, its maneuverability is up to three and even at speed three you get to give yourself um a, a, a one tick at the two end places I like keeping the Assault Frigate at speed 2, that way you get the most number of ticks. You can usually, you know, you'll be in the front arc of the, assault, of the Star Destroyer probably once at long range, and hopefully that will be it, but once, maybe maximum twice, but at that point you're at the side and rear if you're moving past them. So, most fleets... Um, I like having at least one Assault Frigate with uh, my Admiral on it. And if you're Garm um, Bell Ibis, maybe if you have enough money to spend, which um, I, I don't have three Assault Frigates, but I've played with them before borrowing friends kits. And it's a great combination, especially with Garm. But if you have just him, um, just one Assault Frigate, and then maybe give yourself like two Nebulon Bs, that still is gonna give you um, seven tokens um, like for the first and fifth rounds. That's that's pretty helpful. So the Salt Frigate, I love it. It looks weird, <laughs> but it's a great ship. Um, I don't like the two title cards that come with it, the Gallant Haven and Paragon. I just haven't really used them enough to justify the point cost, even though it's relatively minor, but the Paragon, when you do a second attack from the same ship, so you would essentially have to line it up so that you can fire it from both the front and the side arc. But like that doesn't happen all that often, so it gives you one extra black die occasionally if you maneuver it in a very special way. And I find myself just wanting to keep the side arc exposed as much as possible rather than exposing more of my arc. So this is, I haven't found much use of it. Gallant Haven 
sounds great, but I just haven't. It just hasn't been that effective. Before a friendly squadron at distance one suffers damage from an attack, reduce that total damage by one. Now that sounds great, especially since if you're going against Tie Fighters and or um, anti squadron rolls, you're probably only suffering one or two damage at a time anyway. But it's only at distance one, so it has to be really close um, to your assault frigate. And for the most part, squadrons aren't going to stay that close for that long. You do an activate squadron and they all run off and they do their attacks. They don't continue to stay with it. Now, maybe if you pair this with like a, a section of B-Wings that you're going in for an attack run, maybe. But B-Wings are so durable on their own that this card for 8 points just really doesn't seem worth it. So, I almost never use these two upgrades. However, I absolutely love gunnery teams on assault frigates. Almost always. Um, it's an amazing pair up. You get to use this side arc with the three red die and the blue twice, which essentially. Like, especially if you're keeping it at long range, that's giving you six dice that you get to shoot out. And with the arc that large at long range, you're usually going to find a second ship to be able to fire at. So I really like gunnery teams on the Assault Frigate. And if you're going to... Uh, another card that I like to pair with it is the Enhanced Armament. Especially if you do an enhanced armament at 10 points, go ahead and do the investment for another seven for a gunnery team. And then suddenly you're firing four red dice twice, which I've blown up a lot of Star Destroyers using that. Um, so if you do enhanced armament, go ahead and spend the extra money on a gunnery team. Now, if you're going to choose the um, advanced gunnery team's objective, I would leave maybe one of your ships without gunnery team because otherwise you're just wasting the points. But if you don't have gunnery team, I would not put enhanced armament on that one. So I usually, if I'm doing like three assault frigates, I'll have two with gunnery teams and like one without. But um, these two upgrades together on an assault frigate is the Probably my favorite pairing in the whole game. Now some of the other turbo laser upgrades, you know, like the X99 turbo lasers or the X117s, like those, those are fine and they're definitely cheaper than those, but I found getting, the fact that the Star Destroyers have two um, re, um, shield re reroute um, Tokens, I usually don't end up destroying a Star Destroyer until all of its shields are gone anyway, so I'd rather just get more dice hitting it rather than, you know, with the X99 Turbo Lasers being able to do more, da like being able to do two critical effects or, you know, um, the H9 Turbo Lasers of having it be more accuracy. I kind of like just getting more dice thrown out there and having gunnery teams so I get to do it twice. Now, however, if you have General Adama, that's probably going to be a great time to use your X, um, XX9 Turbo Lasers because instead of having just one um, face-up damage, you get to go ahead and pick two. You, I believe you still only get to do the four, but instead of just picking the one that you want, you just pick the two that you want. So. Um, that's a that's a good pairing with it. So the next rebel ship is the Nebulon B escort frigate. Um, there's actually three variants. Um, oh, here we go. Um, there's three different title cards for them. All of them are actually pretty useful in their own way, and I've used all of them. So there's the redemptions, like one a friendly ship is at distance one through five. Resolve. And when it does a engineering command, it gets to be one extra engineering value. So rather than being an engineering value of four, suddenly it's a five. So that way you can do 
a whole repair and a shield repair. So redemption's useful, um, but only in like relatively large fleets. Um, for a 300 point game, I really haven't found it particularly useful, but if you're doing 400 points or if you're doing a, a game that's even larger, having redemption in your fleet definitely gives you um, the ships around it a lot more durability. So it's it's a good card, but it's not amazing. Um, then there's Yarvis. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. So um, whenever you do a squadron, each one that you activate can attack twice is if it does not move. That is a great power. Um, the, especially with particular squadrons where they have a really, like, you know, having... Um, if you're in a bomber range and it's already in range, if you get to have one of your B-wings roll twice against a Star Destroyer instead of... Like, that's, that's two blacks and two blues that you're throwing against it. And you may be doing that twice, or if you have Luke, or even if you have, like, Wedge, who's who gets to go up to six blue dice against other squadrons if they've already gone, like... That, that's particularly damaging and a good com a good companion for that one is actually Rainus and Tilly's so whenever you do a command you get a matching token for that one so if you do a squadron command you automatically get a squadron token so that way when you instead of having to do just the number regular two squadrons that you get to do suddenly you get to do three and like that that's giving you a lot of extra damage now of course um don't put uh Yarvis on a refit because it only has a squadron value of one definitely go ahead and go for the extra points and have it be the frigate now the other two it doesn't matter so much so you can go ahead and like putting a refit on that is like a good good uh, um, use of your money so the Salvation is the last title card. So like while attacking a ship on your front hard, um, hull zone, you get um, your critical icons count as two damage instead of one. That is pretty good, especially since the front hull zone already attacks with three red dice. You know, there's a pretty good chance you'll get uh, one critical out of it. And then the fact that that counts um, as two damage instead of just one, that's 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 pretty gnarly. So, unfortunately, you can't have gunner teams with Nebulon B. So <laughs> that would be particularly powerful. Um, and you know, it's only for your front hull zone. So you know, don't bother putting enhanced armament or something on a Nebulon B, being able to fire more red dice from the side. So, like that's a, that's a pretty good power. Um, I I like that one, especially in larger point games, giving a. Uh, giving your Nebulon Bs extra firepower. If you ever are playing with more than one Nebulon B, please, please, please keep them next to each other. Um, they are great long range sniper, essentially. Their front attack is great. Their sides are beyond terrible with only one shield and only one red and one blue dice you know like i've i've played so many games and when you're facing down a star destroyer and it's coming right for you and you have the option to either stay facing forward and move forward or trying to turn away i have found it's just best to stay forward slow your speed down to one and just take it and yes it's going to be damaging but then rolling extra dice at your front where you have the most shields and you get the most attack dice rather than trying to wimp out and turn to the side it's a game of chicken and i recommend just staying forward and trying to get other ships like your corvette or your assault frigates to the side and doing damage that way now for that reason you want to pair them up together so if you have two 
Nebulon bees, or even three, you can have them all going in a wave, and they're throwing six or nine red dice. In a lot, in at certain ranges, you'll actually be outperforming a star destroyer. So that's my advice. Um, I'm sure people have been able to flank with them, but just because their front arc is so narrow, it's hard to like get out of the way and get in firing position again. Now that said, if you're up close and you're at speed one, a good trick is to bank a navigate token and to use a navigate command to go from speed one to speed three and then you can definitely get out of that arc. So um, keeping a navigate token on Nebulon B is particularly useful, so just stay forward with it and then jump from speed 1 to speed 3 can usually get you out of danger. And the side and the rear arcs of the Star Destroyer are so pitiful that you'll be probably safe um, once you get out of, your, out of the front arc. And then there's the Corvettes. I really like the Corvettes. Um, I like playing with Mon Motha. She's definitely my most co common Admiral. I, you know, the Corvette A, I like a little bit better, but I really like the Corvette B with Adama's Pride that I mentioned before. There's also um, two other variants of the Corvette. There's the Janus Light which you get to ignore obstacles and your attacks can't be obstructed. Then there's the Tantine 4 where you get to give your command to a friendly ship instead of um, using it yourself. Or you, they get to gain that token. There's a Dom's Pride. So James's Light is only two points and that is particular, that's, that's pretty good bargain. and. But if you are going to use it, I would highly recommend you put it on a Corvette A because you're going to be at longer ranges anyway, so you're <clears throat> more likely to be obstructed. But if, if you're doing a large point game, go ahead and, like, for two points, I like, if for a large point game, if it's relatively small and it like, these small upgrades are the difference between having a fighter or, or even a extra Corvette, don't do it, but if it's a large point game, if it's 400 points or something like that, and you, or if you have a whole swarm of Corvettes, which a lot of people have seen to be enjoying doing, having one that's like the last one to go, but it doesn't get obstructed, that's particularly useful. Um, Tantine 4, I don't use as much because, well, if you're a beginner and, you know, you want like your assault frigate is in big trouble and it needs that engineering token and like the corvettes only have one command value so they're much more flexible then maybe go ahead and do it but for the most part i really haven't been using um tam team four all that often but you know if if you're new at the game it's probably like it's probably worth the three points but as you play more you usually get a little bit better about choosing your uh, commands. So, I hope this changes in Wave 2, but right now, ships are definitely favored a lot more than squadrons. Having more turns, more commands, having more flexibility about what ship goes first and what ship goes last, I would recommend building a, 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 a ship heavy fleet rather than a squadron heavy fleet especially if you're playing in a tournament because as soon as you lose all your ships the game is over and you're tabled even if all your squadrons are alive if they can kill your last ship then that's it the game is over and like they get all the points so it's just it's just not worth the risk, you know, having three X-Wings or having a extra Corvette, I almost always rather have that extra Corvette. Now, giving yourself, you know, one to three 
fighters just to hedge a bet in case they go fighter heavy, that's perfectly fine. But um, there's just not a high percentage of success if you do a really heavy squadron game. But that's actually one reason why on this channel and uh, like uh, some of my other videos where I'm doing 500, 650, up to a thousand point games. Because when you get that large, you know, you can be much more, um, you know, generous with your points and go ahead and get those fighters. And it makes it much more cinematic. But if you're trying to win, I would highly recommend going with mostly ships. Um, but so if you're doing a larger game, we're assuming that you're doing a larger game, then um, I'll quickly go over some of the squadrons and which ones I really like. So there's Wedge and Luke as the two X-Wing heroes. There's Dutch um, for the Y-Wings. Um, King and Farlander as a B-Wing and Tycho. Has A wing squadrons. X wings are particularly useful. B wings, and here's the Y wings. So, X wings are just good workhorses. I mean, four blue die, that is, that is great. Like, if you roll with any kind of luck, um, you can uh, destroy a TIE fighter in just one hit, which no matter what, they can't do against you because you have five. Of five health, speed three. That's pretty good, and you get the you get the bomber. So even though you're rolling a red dice, if you get a critical, you can go ahead and cause that critical effect. Escort. That doesn't really seem to be all that useful, just because the um, the rebel Y um, bombers are they have so much life on their own that you know they can usually handle themselves in a dogfight as well. Uh, Wedge and Tilly's, he's, he's brutal against other fighter-heavy builds. I don't get him that often just because I, I really haven't been playing against that many fighter-heavy builds. He's six more points than a regular X-Wing, but his only advantage is when it comes to fighting other squadrons. So... I don't use Wedge all that much unless I'm doing a really big game that I know there's going to be a squadron. Or if your opponent really like, you know your opponent and they like squadrons, go ahead and, and bring in Wedge. Luke, however, he's a great fighter and he's a great anti-ship fighter. So even if they don't bring a single um, squadron, a lot of times it feels like it's a waste that you bothered to use the points, but the fact that he bypasses shields, so you get a hit in early, you hopefully get a critical, and then you can really cripple their ship for the rest of the game. So, I really like Luke, he's 20 points, but he's well worth it. Y-Wings, um, they're cheap, and they're pretty darn effective. With a life of 6, they can just, like, they're, like, I really haven't lost that many Y-Wings. Usually the game ends before they get destroyed. They go at the same speed as the X-Wings, so they can move together. They have six life. Um, Anti-squadron roll of only two, that's obviously not all that good. But a black die, that's that's great against, and only ten. Like, the, you can really swarm them if you're going to do a Y-Wing attack wing. Um, Dutch, Dutch I like, um, he has an attack value of 3, he's only 16, which isn't like that much compared to like an X-Wing, but his power is particularly useful against other fighters. If you're attacking a fighter and they haven't gone yet, when you attack them and cause any damage, you get to toggle their activation slider so that, as if they had already gone. So. If there's a Darth Vader, which is just a devastating ship, going ahead and like bringing Dutch forward just to like keep them from being able to use Darth Vader is it's worth the points right there because Darth Darth can almost like kill a ship every turn with with the um, three 
blue and one black dice roll that he rolls. B wings. I'm really conflicted with B wings. They have a pretty good anti fighter roll of three. They have a the best uh, anti ship roll of a blue and a black or a black and a black. Like they're just devastating against ships. But they're relatively expensive and they're slow. They're only at speed two. So they're. I end up favoring Y wings more than the B wings just because I know for sure that the Y wings are going to be able to get into the fight more often than than the B wings. But if you're again, if you're doing a large game, um, B wings are fun, and the fact that um, K and Farlander can roll t um, re um, re roll if um, there's no shield, so obviously have him go last. You can make sure that. I, I've I've destroyed Star Destroyers by having uh, being able to do two by doing a critical and a hit on both of them. So that's the four damage right there. You really can't com complain too much about that. Um, a wings, they're they're great ships. I love the counter twos. If um, you think they're gonna bring squadrons, go ahead and um, bring them in. They have a life of four which is pretty good and a speed of five. They can really get wherever they want on the battlefield. Um, um, Tycho, I like because of the scatter, but his um, his power of you not being prevented from moving or attacking ships while you're engaged, I really don't find that particularly useful because he's not a bomber, so you don't get to do that critical effect. So that, that um, that critical on the black dice just doesn't seem to, like, doesn't draw to me. I'd rather have him go ahead and fight the other squadrons. But um, the speed and the relatively low price of the A-Wings definitely make them great fighters. But I wouldn't pair that if you're doing Dama and you want to get as many criticals as possible, I wouldn't focus on the A-Wings. I would focus on all the other, all the other ones. Uh, just because if you're going to have this general, you just as well use them to your fullest ability. So that is the end of the Rebel strategy. I hope um, this has helped clear some things up and help giving you some thoughts of how to build your fleet. I, um, I, um, I'm really looking forward to Wave 2. I'll do a separate video when that is out because it's going to change quite a number of things particularly making Mon Mothma less useful just because the um, the Mon Kamari cruisers don't have an evade. So if you if you get one, that's over a hundred points that isn't going to be able to use that power. However, Garm, he's going to be as useful as ever when you have the Mon Kamari cruiser because you'll get to be able to put three tokens on that. And um, Akbar, um, who they've already leaked an image of, or didn't leak, they showed the image of the fact that he adds two red dice if you only attack when you're fl flanks, which a lot of these ships only do anyway. I could see Akbar being a great combination with a fleet of assault frigates and Mon Karmari cruisers, and maybe even um, Corvette A's. Definitely not Nebulon B's because their side arcs, um, even if you're doing extra damage from them, you never want to expose that area that's only one shield. And yes, you get an extra two, but you you would have to give up using that side, um, that front three. So if you do Mon Car um, General Akbar, I would focus on Assault Frigates and Mon Karmari Cruisers and maybe throw in a Corvette here and there. But the problem with that is Mon Karmari makes Corvettes so much survivable but that you're really going to miss that more powerful evade once Akbar shows up. But that'll be for a whole other video when all of the admirals and ships are um, shown and I'll uh, do it then because I've already have them pre-ordered. So thank you and I, um, if you enjoy this, I'm, I will also be doing an Empire one. 
So um, stay tuned for that. Thank you. Bye.